I found a new, or new to me, bike on the rack at my local Walmart store, the Genesis Incline. A full suspension mountain bike, and the Genesis brand, it has its fans, and that's why this grabbed my attention, though the highlighter yellow accents, they may have helped. At my local store and on the Walmart website, this bike is currently priced at $174. And for the specs, we'll see all the components in a moment, but the highlights are that this is a 29-inch wheelset bike. It has a front disc brake. Again, we'll go over all that in a minute, but the thing that jumps out at me is the height sizing. This is for riders 6 feet and up. More on that coming up. Let's look at the components. The handlebars, they're big box narrow, both in width and diameter. Not uncommon for mountain bike style big box bikes. What is uncommon though is that they have an oddly high rise for a mountain bike style bike. The headset's threadless and it's so nice to see this on just about every Walmart bike in this price range now. But the stem here, it's the lowest grade threadless headset stem. It's an open face design, kind of like the $99 cutback hat. And that was cool because it was a $99 bike, so less of a pass here. And the stem cap, it's also a two bolter, so two demerits. Shifters, they're twist shifters, so a lot of down steps here, but we're starting to see trigger shifters now on bikes as low as $129, so I would expect them here. These are Revos at least, though they're basic Revos, but better than generics. Brake levers, plastic, power branded, more on the brakes in a second. Head tube branding is a foil sticker, a big G, and the fork. It's regular that I say next to bottom end or one step up from bottom end when I'm talking about a suspension fork. What do I mean by that? Well, here you go. No preload adjustment, super limited travel, cheap black paint even on the stanchions, and boots that look like they're on a fork from 1990, even a thin fork arch. Now, I'm not trying to be overly critical, I'm just calling it as it is. I think better can be done for $174, though I do get that sacrifices have to be made for the bigger wheels and a rear suspension. But this sub $200 market, it's competitive now, and that means there are choices. And the tires, they're generic knobbies for these 29 inch wheels, and they say 29 by 2.30, but I can tell you in person these do not look like standard 2.30s, they're more narrow. The wheels themselves, alloy, double wall rims with a rim braking surface. Now that braking surface is not needed on the front wheel because it's disc equipped, 160 millimeter rotor and a generic highlighter yellow caliper. And you can guess where this is going, a rear rim brake. The positive is at least the braking surface gets used and the wheels match. And the combo, it's enough to stop the bike. The frame is 6061 aluminum, and it's about average for a big box full suspension bike. It weighs in at, I'm guessing, around 37 to 38 pounds. The frame design, though, it's a bit different. It's vertically narrow for the top and the down tubes with an angular design. I don't think I've ever seen this before, and it's uniquely cool. Drivetrain-wise, it's all the usual stuff. Plastic pedals, 170mm crank arms, and a 3 by setup that regular viewers should know all too well. Kazuno branding for the front derailleur, I guess I'll take a sticker over generic. The rear derailleur, even though it's a Shimano, it's a flat face, and it's known that I don't like these. And the reason why is because you can't use a mega range freewheel on this setup. That means it's stuck with a freewheel that's 14 to 28 tooth. Also Kazuno branded. Now to the bike's key feature, the rear suspension with a 650 pounds per inch spring rating. This is a very typical big box looking rear suspension, nothing especially good or really bad aside from these are known pogo sticks for most adult riders. Make a mental note of that because I'll come back to it in a second. The pivot arm itself, it looks fine and the bushings, now I didn't get to disassemble this in the store but they look like they may be metal. The bottom bracket, this is the most basic they could have used and note that crank arm cap is missing probably not an assembler issue, I'm assuming someone just stole it off the shelf. All the critical welds, they're night school passable. There's a kickstand too, when it's folded up it juts out almost to the end of the rear wheel. There's a quick release seat clamp to adjust the height on that very basic saddle which I noticed was slammed as low as it would go. And there's a reason for that because this is a tall bike. It states so on the info card and on the website, it's for riders 6 feet and up. Let's go back to that suspension. Remember I told you to keep it in your head because it relates here. Because these components, I think they're better suited for lighter riders, which are most likely not going to be six feet or taller. And the bike, it is tall, so it's going to need a bigger rider, which is probably going to weigh enough to make it a pogo stick and make the front suspension even more useless. And this may sound like I'm really trashing this thing, but I'm not. Because as I always say, if it works for you, it's a great bike. 
Are there more capable bikes in the same price range? Well, I can think of a few that I would pick, but overall bike shopping is about what someone wants versus what they can afford. And there's something appealing to someone in almost everything. Like say the narrow and angular frame design. I could see someone locking in on that and wanting the bike because of that look. The bottom line is to be happy with what you have, and I hope this video helps in making that happen, or at the very least, for making informed decisions. Subscribe and hit that notification bell if you're new here, and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and informative. Thanks for watching Kev Central, and have a great day.